Without EZE, the legendary rap group NWA would never have happened. With a combination of drug money, business savvy, and street knowledge, Eric EZE Wright started and operated one of the most successful independent record companies of all time. EZE helped to launch the careers of rap's first billionaire, Dr. Dre, and helped make Ice Cube a household name. Known as the godfather of gangster rap, EZE died tragically of AIDS related complications in March of 1995 at the age of just 31. But was his death due to unprotected sex, or did something else cause EZE to contract AIDS and die from it? You know where the fuck I'm from? It's bumped, nigga. I want to tackle a topic here on this channel, a question people have been asking for over 20 years. As you'll see here, it's definitely a question worth asking. Was Eazy-E infected with HIV by someone in hip hop that wanted him dead? They get blood from somebody with AIDS, yeah. and then they shoot you with it. Oh, so well, that, that seems happen, bad. That's yeah. a slow death. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eazy-E thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. What's going on, guys? My name is Michael McCrudden, and I host Before They Were Famous, and also have a series titled Before They Were Gone. I just wanted to say that if you guys see a Before They Were Gone video made on me, it's likely because I made this video. And if that's the case, please someone delete my laptop history and throw my MacBook straight into a fire and then into a lake. It's more of a fat book than a MacBook, but that's not the point. Just as long as you're looking at women who... Not women? Wow! Okay! Men? Chicks with dicks? Horses? Worse than horses? Now if you enjoyed this type of video where I sit down and investigate, I've also made one titled, Is Birdman Gay? And that one's clocked in almost 2 million views. Be sure to check that out as well. All right, well, here we go. After the film Straight Outta Compton was released in theaters in August of 2015, a whole new generation of people learned about one of the most influential and iconic rap groups in history, the NWA. A collective group consisting of MC Ren, DJ Yella, Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, and the initial financial backer and brains of the group, Eric Eazy-E Wright. Selling millions of records and thousands of concert tickets, NWA is one of the most influential rap groups of all time. They considered each other family at one point, so why do some people think that members of this group are the ones who conspired to kill Easy e Specifically, Dr. Dre. I don't know what he's talking about. You know what I'm, I'm saying? I'm innocent. Word, word. Now, I really hate to say it, but if you were to assume that Easy e was essentially murdered, you'd have to look at Dr. Dre as at least a potential suspect. Dre had some pretty good reasons for wanting Easy e dead. With Easy e and manager Jerry Heller at the helm of Ruthless Records, Dr. Dre was straight up getting screwed for royalties and payment. Came in and kind of fucked it up. And his name is? Jerry Heller. <laughs> I don't know Jerry. <laughs> kind of um, pulled easy to the side and he sold out, sold his soul. Case in point, according to documents in 1992, Dr. Dre only made slightly over $86,000 for the entire year. Meanwhile, Ruthless Records, well, they were banking $10 million a month. Check out this clip from 2015 where Jerry Heller, well, he discusses the success of Ruthless Records. He said, first of all, we're doing $10 million a month with six employees. We don't even have a typewriter in the office. I said, we're the most successful startup record company in the history of, of the, the music business. And even after Dre left and signed with Death Row, Eazy -E was still going to be making a big cut for at least six more years. I get a percentage of his record sales, whether he produces as an artist and whether he produced Snoop, Rage, Daz, Corrupt, or whoever else off Death Row. You don't see jack of shit to come from Death Row. I make money off Dre's record sales. Yeah. The poor pay situation not only ended the relationship, Dre went on television essentially saying that Eazy -E was gonna get murdered. I guess they didn't respect my talent. <laughs> you know, so now they're suffering the consequences. Eazy -E, you're dropping like a brick, boy. See ya. <laughs> and it's not like he wasn't capable of doing it. In 1991, Dr. Dre reportedly brutally assaulted TV host Dee Barnes. After she aired what the rap supergroup considered to be a misleading and highly edited interview conducted with NWA. In her own words, he, Dr. Dre, picked me up by my hair and my ear and smashed my face and body into the wall. 
Next thing I know, I'm down on the ground and he's kicking me in the ribs and stamping on my fingers. I ran into the woman's bathroom to hide, but he burst through the door and started bashing me in the back of the head. Now it's important to note that the man has since apologized. Any man that puts his hands on a female is a fucking idiot. He's out of his fucking mind. And I was out of my fucking mind at the time. I fucked up. I paid for it. I'm sorry for it. So now we know that the doctor had one hell of a temper, and you must imagine he wasn't too happy with Easy e when him and his boys were going on camera saying stuff like this. It's all about real niggas from Compton. I'm putting all them niggas that's claiming they're from Compton out the picture because they really ain't from Compton. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Just setting the record ba ba straight. Basically, he's talking yeah, about uh, Dre for hollering that he's a you know, real Compton City G. <laughs> It was just easy e and his gang. Tupac also took some pretty heavy shots at the doctor, questioning his sexuality. LA, California Love Park, motherfucker, too. Without gay ass drink. Why don't y'all just make up? <laughs> he already made up. You ain't never seen him with the lipstick and lipstick. Oh, no, 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 I mean, no. No, I mean. If you're not sure what they're referring to with the doctor wearing makeup and weird stuff like that before NWA, well he was a part of the hip hop boy band called the World Class Wrecking Crew. Many would say their wardrobe choices, <clears throat> their wardrobe choices were questionable at best. It wasn't just Tupac and Eazy-E spreading this info, one of hip hop's biggest gangsters was also starting to question Dre's sexuality. Take a listen to Suge Knight on the Howard Stern Show. <laughs> then, the, then Dre said, Pac, I thought you were smart, you still dumb. If I want to pound some butt, I could do a woman. I'm a, I'm a bisexual because I like to get my cheekbones blue out. I like to get pounded in the butt. Should Nate is not the type of guy anyone needs to mess with, his tactics were brutal. Take a listen to this confession. He might have got a few punches and he probably drunk about 20 shots of piss. You know what I mean? Literally. Ugh. I don't want none of that. I'm Irish. I was also a bartender. And I've seen many a shot in my life. Piss isn't one of them. <clears throat> Gross. Okay. Well, Dre didn't like what Suge Knight had to say, and apparently he was ready to do something about it. In a court document filed in Los Angeles back in 2014, lawyers for Suge Knight claimed that Dr. Dre paid two shooters to kill Suge in a West Hollywood club. Knight also alleges in the legal docs that the shooter confessed that Dre had paid him and a friend $50,000 for the hit. And that not only did the LA County Sheriff's Department inexplicably release the shooter from custody, but that the police were privy to video shot at LAX, which allegedly shows Deputy Boyd helping the gunman flee the country. Suge Knight and his attorney think that a sheriff's deputy was conspiring uh, to get him to kill him in that shooting, it was at, was at One Oak, uh, One Oak in West Hollywood. I, so I just can, can I just clarify one thing? When you say he's implicated, implicated by Suge's lawyer and by yes. Suge, not by the yes. police or not anything. not by the police or anything, exactly. Okay. Well, just because he allegedly put a hit out on Suge, that doesn't necessarily mean Dre would have had Easy e killed, does it? I'm just giving you guys all the evidence I could. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But I got one more piece of evidence that might make you think twice about the doc. In the biggest what the fuck moment in all rap lyrics, Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre seemingly mentioned Easy e having HIV years before he got sick. It's in a skit called House Party on Snoop Dogg's 1993 album. House Party, Dre and Snoop seemingly take shots at Easy e and they even mention HIV. I want to say that the HIV line was for Luke Campbell from 2 Live Crew, who was a porn star rapper and not about Easy e But Luke, he never contracted HIV and is currently still alive and well. Were there other signs of Easy e getting potentially murdered, hidden in a rap album? Well, Easy es own son seems to think so. In a now deleted Instagram post, he stated, Easy e did not get sick until after the studio incident with Suge, and look how he acknowledged and admits on his interview with Jimmy Kimmel, injecting people instead of shooting them is the new thing that's done. Oh, and let's not touch the topic on Ice Cube naming his album Lethal Injection. Yeah, that's a pretty weird album cover. And the album is filled with shots at Easy, while Dr. Dre and even Ice Cube could reasonably be accused of potentially setting up Easy E with a deadly virus. For my money, no one is more likely to have done this than hip hop's most dangerous man, the piss pouring, cigar smoking brick house of a dude who goes by the name of Suge Knight. They get blood from somebody with AIDS. Yeah. And then they shoot you with it. Oh, so well, that that's seems happen, bad. That's yeah. a slow death. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that easy thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, no. 
Okay. In and now infamous appearance on the Jimmy Kimmel Show, Suge's comments brought the possibility of foul play and Eazy's death to the mainstream. Suge Knight would have had many reasons to have wanted Eazy dead, the main one being that Eazy E was planning to kill him. One of the key pieces to the success and also the downfall of NWA, big money manager Jerry Heller, well he detailed Eazy E's plans to kill Suge Knight. Take a listen. And Eazy said, you know this guy Suge Knight? I said, yeah. He says, well, I'm going to kill him. He said, this guy's going to be a problem, and I think I should kill him. And wow. I said, I said, let me think wow. this. I said, let me think this thing through. He also would go on to say that his biggest regret was not letting Easy do it. And you know something? I should have let him kill him. Yeah. You know, he would have. I would have done the world a favor. He would have done it for sure, by himself. You know, he always rolled by himself, and he was fearless. Shook would probably be the prime suspect in the case if it were open today. He threatened Eazy E and Jerry Heller with goons and lead pipes in order to get Dr. Dre off his Ruthless Records deal. He was also criminally charged for sending death threats to the director of Straight Outta Compton, F. Gary Gray, and legit killed someone on the set of the movie when he brutally ran over a record label executive by the name of Terry Carter. And who can forget he famously almost iced rapper Vanilla Ice when he held him by the feet from a 15-story balcony. You scared? <laughs> I needed to wear a diaper on that day. <laughs> I was very scared. On the balcony, Ben Winkle says Suge Knight told him to sign over points from the song to a man named Mario Lavelle Johnson. Suge Knight has not only been implicated in the death of Eazy E, but also suspected to have had a hand in the unsolved murders of both Tupac and Biggie, meaning he could have taken out three of the biggest legends in the history of rap music. Now I'm actually get working on videos, you know, on who killed Biggie and who killed Tupac, and you gotta know that Suge's gonna be on both them lists. For real. Of course, there is the theory that Eazy E could have simply died from the disease he contracted with no foul play. He was a notorious ladies man who hated condoms. He even admitted it himself while on the Howard Stern show. You don't have condoms? No. Nah. You never wear a condom? Nah. You, know, you heard about AIDS? Yeah, but the people that I mess with don't. They're clean. Yeah, they're clean. How do you know? You smell them before you have sex with them. I would have had it myself if, I had, if they would have had it, right? Oh. Oh, man. But certain aspects, they just don't add up. I mean, he had a wife and dozens of mistresses, and he fathered two children, and none of these people, not even the kids, none of the ladies, not even his wife, None of them had HIV or any illness. Nobody has came up with HIV or nothing like that. So, I mean, just, just rationally thinking something, something had to go on. With all the money he had in the bank and all the new revenues coming in after his death, no one came forward with an HIV accusation or a lawsuit. He had over $50 million in the bank from Ruthless Records, and no one came forward looking for a dime? Damn. With all that money, you'd think someone would have got him a more elaborate tombstone. I'm just saying. Now I'm no AIDS expert, the most I know about the disease is from watching the Tom Hanks film Philadelphia, but I believe those who contract it, well they have a few years on the clock. Easy went from being considered healthy to diagnosed in January, he was admitted to the hospital in February, and he was in a casket by the end of March. Now you'd think at the very least, there would be an investigation into why this all happened and so fast and who did it? Well, when you put out a song titled Fuck the Police, turns out, they're not really in your corner. The nigga got it bad cuz I'm brown and not the other color so police think they have the authority to kill a minority. All right guys, that's all the digging I could do. Now I leave it up to you guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And who you think did you know what? My name is Mike McCrudden. Be sure to check out the previous video I did on Birdman. He hates it. He doesn't like that one. It's pretty funny. Also, we've got two pocket biggies similar to this. We're gonna be pumping those out in the coming weeks. So be sure to subscribe if you're new here, and I'll see you guys in another video. Boom! Should night for sure.